All right, so I want to talk about, well, actually, I've already talked about it. Over the past year or so, I've gone back and revisited every single game in the North American lineup of Wii series of games, and given my thoughts and opinions on every single one. So instead of coming up with a cohesive, comprehensive way to review the Wii series as a whole, I'm just going to take the lazy way out and copy and paste what I've already said. Alright, so I want to talk about Wii Sports, but I just need to do something real quick before that. Yeah, ever since I got banned from the local bowling alleys, I've just been dying to throw a bowling ball into a live crowd. Uh, but yeah, Wii Sports! With the somewhat recent announcement of Nintendo Switch Sports being the next sequel to the series, I've decided to take a look back at the original games and remember what made them so great, and that way I can complain even more when the new game comes out. I mean, seriously, what are these things? I prefer my sports game playable characters to have arms chopped off, thank you very much. Way back in the ancient times of 2006, the world was blessed with the arrival of one of gaming's greatest games of all time, Wii Sports. Originally bundled in with the Wii console as a pack-in title, Wii Sports has grown to become a huge icon in the history of gaming and is one of the best-selling games of all time. Mostly because it was a pack-in, but we'll just ignore that. The whole point of Wii Sports was to show off the capabilities of Nintendo's newest console at the time, the Wii, and its use of motion controls. Nowadays, it's not completely uncommon to find games that require some amount of motion controls, but in 2006, this was a foreign idea. In the long run, I would personally say that Wii Sports did a great job in representing the Wii's motion control capabilities. They aren't super realistic, but they get with the job done and they work better than what you would expect. I mean, most of the games that use motion controls just require you to shake the Wii mode a whole lot anyway, and Wii Sports no exception. Now, with Wii Sports being a pack-end title for the Wii, naturally it was going to be most people's first Wii game that they would play, and so it needed to make really great first impressions. And well... It doesn't get better than that, guys. I don't know a single person who doesn't like this game. And if you don't like this game, then you need to seek help because there is something medically wrong with you. It could be terminal if left unchecked. Upon booting up Wii Sports, you were met with the classic moment of having to press both the A and B buttons at the same time before you were brought to one of the most legendary lineup of sports you will ever see. You thought the Olympics was great? No, wrong. Wii Sports. You've got tennis, baseball, bowling, golf, and boxing. All unique and different enough from each other to showcase different uses of the Wiimote and its use of motion controls, all while giving players a varied experience. Something I am worried about with the upcoming game. But that's future me's job to complain about that. All the sports offered up here are iconic. Everybody has played a game of tennis by waving their hand around like a maniac, everyone has thrown the ball back into the crowd during bowling, and everyone has gotten mad at not understanding the shot meter in golf. It's just a staple of the game. The first game in the lineup is tennis. One of the more simpler games in my opinion, you play a game of doubles tennis with your Miis and all you have to do is swing the Wiimote at the correct time and you'll get the ball across. Very little skill is involved but you are able to get some pretty fun volleys back and forth with your opponent if you are playing well enough. Although this is simple, games do go by fast enough that it is enjoyable to sit down and play through multiple at a time, especially if you are playing with someone else in the room. And although I do say that there is very little skill involved, that's not entirely true. You can get better and improve your game. Learning exactly when to hit the ball to get it to where you want it to go is something that you can really only learn through continuously playing the game over and over, and it is satisfying to learn that and get better at the game. Next up in the line is baseball, one of the more involved games considering that you have to play both on the batter side and the pitcher side. In Wii Sports, this game gets stripped down a lot to simplify playing, but it kind of works in this game's favor. Once you hit, depending on how long it takes for the other team to pick up your ball, that is how many bases you'll run. So when on defense, you really don't have to worry about playing outfield, only pitching. And while this may seem like a bad thing, I think this adds a lot of charm to the game. Watching the Miis pick up the ball, stare straight into the camera and say single or double or just whatever is honestly one of the funniest and most iconic things about this game. When you're batting, it's pretty much just make sure you swing the Wiimote at the correct time and for pitching, you're just swinging the Wiimote to throw the ball. Nothing too complicated, but it is one of the more involved sports overall, and it is pretty fun and there's a little bit of strategy that you can have, especially if you play the game to get good enough to bunt the ball and make sure that you know when to hit it, you know, all that stuff. Next sport in the lineup is bowling, probably the most iconic in the original set. Line up your shot and knock over as much pins as possible. Next sport. Nah, I'm kidding, there's so much more to bowling than just that. 
Of course the main focus is obviously to line up and knock over the pins, but you can rotate and get different angles, and you can even put some spin on your shot if you're good enough. This is a great game to show off some of the subtleties and the Wiimote motion control capabilities, and I like that. Even though I almost never use the advanced techniques and just pretty much always line up straight on and try to knock over as much pins that way. Even though this may be one of the more simple games, it is definitely one of the most replayable and consistently enjoyable to go back to and replay. Trying to get better scores and more strike and just overall improving your skill is really satisfying and fun. Moving on to the next sport for real this time, we've got golf. Depending on what club you're using will depend on how far the ball will hit. There is a gauge meter off to the side and if you swing your Wiimote too hard it'll go crazy and your ball won't hit straight. I never really figured this thing out as a kid playing the game and even now I still don't 100% get the shot meter. But golf can be a really fun sport to play in this game, especially if you've got friends here and you can see just how bad and crazy some of your shots will end up. There are 9 total holes in the game that you can play through, and the cool thing about them is that they're all actually remakes of the original NES game Golf. And finally, for the last sport in this game, Boxing. This is the only sport that actually requires you to use the nunchuck attachment for the Wiimote. This allows you to box with both of your hands. Remember this because we will be coming back to that point. This is definitely one of the most involved sports in the game, but in turn is one of the most fun to play. Getting to just wail and punch on some of these helpless opponent me's is so fun. I love getting to watch how some of their bodies will ragdoll after being knocked out. The more you win, the harder your opponents will get, but at the beginning when you have little skill level, it's a slaughterhouse against them. You can dodge by moving the Wiimote and nunchuck from side to side, and you can hit high or low based on how high your hands are. And you can even pull off some hook punches that hit your opponent from the side. Overall, there's a lot of movement options for you and how you can attack opponents, and mastery of these options is really fun and satisfying to learn. Overall, the original Wii Sports game and its 5 sports are really fun and solid, but alongside the sports is a training mode where you can do little skill-based mini-games to help improve in each individual sport. These are target practices, variants of the original sport, or playing segments of each sport to get better at. These are all fun and definitely worth checking out. But yeah, that's about all we would see of Nintendo's generic tech demo sporting titles for a few years. That is, of course, until... In 2009, Wii Sports Resort was released upon the world showing us that even on vacation you can beat up hundreds of innocent people and burn some calories. I absolutely love this game, so naturally there's going to be some bias in what I say, but when I say that this game is a solid 11, maybe 12 out of 10 game, it's not my opinion, but rather an objective fact that if you disagree with is punishable by law in at least 53 states in the US. This game is a true sequel to the original in nearly every way possible. The obvious upgrade is the number of sports going from the original 5 in Wii Sports to now being 12 in Wii Sports Resort. Swordplay, wakeboarding, frisbee, archery, basketball, table tennis, golf and bowling return, power cruising, canoeing, cycling, and air sports. And these are just sport categories. Under each of these is at least two or three options of different things that you can do. For example, air sports you can either skydive or fly around the island in the free roaming fashion. Or in frisbee you can either do target practice with a dog or play frisbee golf. There's just so much to do in this game. I'm not going to be able to go into full detail with this game and go over every single individual sport like I did with the first one just from how much there is, but I will try and touch on a few key points and things of note. Like how this game adds continuity to the Wii Sports franchise. Every sport and activity in this game takes place somewhere on or around the main island in the game, Woohoo Island. This island is so amazing and well crafted that I would go as far as to kill to be able to visit here in real life. So, be careful if the opportunity is ever offered to me, because no one is safe then. The so best way to experience and explore the island is the island flyover mode since you are able to fly a plane over and around the island to explore different landmarks and areas. It is arguably one of the best modes in this game, and probably what most people remember about Wii Sports Resort. Another way to explore the island is through the cycling mode where you can race around different tracks that loop and go through the island showing off different areas each time. Nearly any sport that you choose will give you a different experience somewhere on Woohoo Island, and that's what I love about this game. It feels like one big connected game and less like a tech demo of sports, although it is still that. Wii Sports Resort is mostly a way for Nintendo to once again show off a piece of motion controlling technology, the Wii Motion Plus accessory. It's that white cube that you'd have to plug into the bottom of the Wiimote where the nunchuck would go, or eventually Wiimotes would just have this built into them. This allows for the Wiimote to have a more accurate motion sensing capability. 
and can give players more than just swing the Wiimote around like crazy simulator. I've got to say that the Wii Motion Plus definitely works better than the original Wiimote by itself. The sports are way more fun to play this time around with the better motion controls. Unlike the first game where you pretty much just swung the Wiimote around for every sport in Resort, you actually do different motions correlating to what the sport you are playing. For example, in sword play you have to move the Wiimote around like it's a sword, and for canoeing you have to move it around like it's the paddle, and for skydiving you move the Wiimote around like a lifeless corpse falling at terminal velocity just like if you were doing the real thing. A few of my favorite sports is pickup basketball where you play on teams of 3 vs 3, table tennis, sword play showdown where you fight through hordes of opponents, and of course, island flyover. I love all the sports in this game, don't get me wrong, but these are the ones that I would come back to and play the most. Like I said before, bowling and golf make their return, but with some changes. Bowling doesn't change too much, more or less just accuracy to the controls, but golf adds a whole nother set of 9 holes and keeps the original holes from Wii Sports. A couple of the sports in the game require you to use a nunchuck similarly to how boxing would in the original. A few of these are like archery where you can use it to simulate pulling the bow back, and another one is power cruising where you use it to act like the handles on the jet ski. Now I could go on and on about this game all day honestly, but I have to stop myself at some point. If you have somehow never experienced this game, I would highly recommend going and checking it out. But it's very unlikely that you haven't played this game since it's only the third best selling game on the Wii, which is one of the best selling consoles of all time. Overall, there's a ton to do in this game and the amount of polish and charm they added to this game compared to the original is insane. This game is aged like fine wine if you ask me. It still holds up extremely well and is really fun and well made even to this day. Which is something that this next game can't really say for itself. Yeah, I bet you didn't know that game existed. And if you did, you probably forgot about it. Wii Sports Club was a game released... Yeah. This game released weirdly. Let me explain this first. The game is a remake of the original Wii Sports title. So the number of sports has dropped down from 12 in Resort back to just 5. Which is fine, because at least they have released high quality remakes of all the 5 sports at once, right? They released the game with all 5 sports in it, right? They didn't do that, did they? In 2013, Wii Sports Club was released with just tennis and bowling. At the end of 2013, golf was released. And finally, in mid-2014, baseball and boxing were finally released and the game was complete. I still remember when this game came out and how excited I was for a new Wii Sports game, only to realize there was two sports. There was only two sports at launch. This is borderline criminal. This was a horrible release strategy and ultimately hurt the game in the end. But thankfully Nintendo has learned from this and won't be releasing their unfinished sports game and then adding, I don't know, golf later on after initial release. A second free update that lets you enjoy golf will launch this fall. Oh come on! Wii Sports Club is a weird game in the series focusing more on the online multiplayer, which is cool to get to play the original Wii Sports game but online and with a better coat of paint over it. And when people played this game when it first came out, it was fun! I played the heck out of tennis online. The game has completely updated controls and they're the best in the series by far. They mimic real life movements better than Resort even could, and for sure better than the original game. But with everything this game gets right, it gets much, much more wrong. See, I really want to like this game. I do, honestly, I really do want to like this game. With the updated graphics that look better than anything in the series up to date, online play, better improved motion controls, this game should be great. But you have to either individually buy sports or purchase a day pass that allows you to play all the passes, but only for that day. So, after a quick visit to the eShop, I can finally play the game I have had downloaded on my Wii U for years now. So, with Wii Sports Club being more or less a remake of the original Wii Sports, there's really not much I have to add on terms of like how enjoyable each game is. Obviously, being on a new console, each game does have some tweaks to make them a little bit different functionality, but at the end of the day, it is still pretty similar to the original game. However, two of the sports have added completely new gimmicks and functionalities requiring the Wii U gamepad. 
Baseball being the first game that they added the Wii U gamepad functionality to, you are now allowed to aim where you want using the Wii U gamepad instead of using motion control. I think this is much, much more fun because it feels more involved when you're on the defense side of things. Also, when you're in the outfield and a batter hits the ball, you are able to look up using the gamepad and you can actually catch the ball to get the out. It really adds a lot more to do when you're on defense and I really enjoyed that. It made the game a lot more fun than the original Wii Sports version. But secondly, Golf has added the Wii U gamepad into the mix. This is easily the most functionally different game from its original counterpart. And this was a big seller of Wii Sports Club. You put your gamepad in risk of being stepped on by laying it on the floor and you get to use it to act like your ball. And then you use the Wiimote like a golf club and it surprisingly works really well. I'm impressed at just how accurately they managed to replicate actually swinging a golf club like this. I could see a lot of people hating the sport if they haven't actually golfed before. But if you are somewhat familiar on how to swing a golf club, you probably will enjoy this game. I typically haven't liked golf in the Wii Sports games before this, but here it is probably my favorite sport. On top of the completely revamped and over convoluted controls, they added yet another new set of 9 holes to play and still brought back the original holes from Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort. Overall, I feel like they put the most thought and effort into this game mode compared to the other sports that are in this package. Now, while baseball and golf have updated mechanics using the Wii U gamepad, bowling and tennis act pretty much the same just with improved controls. But the last sport in the game is boxing and I really want to talk about boxing. You see, boxing also got a controller update, but unfortunately, it is for the worst. Originally I had told you to remember that how in the first game you were able to plug a nunchuck in to use both of your hands to box. Well, if you want to do that in Wii Sports Club, you need two Wiimotes and I am too lazy to go get two Wiimotes. So if you don't have two Wiimotes, you are stuck using just the one, and it is so lame. And I don't know what they did, but boxing feels so slow and stale this time around. When you knock someone out, they don't ragdoll like before, they just have a set animation that plays where they fall on the ground. Everything feels slow and stiff. I had the least enjoyment out of this mode and would definitely say that it is the only sport that is objectively worse than how it was in the original game. Other than boxing, however, I would say that Wii Sports Club is a solid game and is the definitive way to play most of these sports. But the game was ruined and bogged down by the release strategy and subscription model to play the game. The lack of an online community doesn't help either, but that's really not Nintendo's fault. If you are one of the four people that own a Wii U, I would recommend giving this a go. The day pass for all the sports is only a couple of dollars and I'm pretty sure that the game is free to download, so if you have nothing else better to do, it's worth checking out. But in terms of the Wii Sports series, it's the weakest. Like I've mentioned, a sequel to the Wii Sports games is being released soon with Nintendo Switch Sports and at the moment, I have pretty mixed feelings about the game. I am excited that Nintendo is acknowledging the Wii series of games and giving Wii Sports a new game for the Switch. But just from the trailers of the game, it looks like a lot of what gave the original game so much charm and character is missing. I am excited and looking forward to play the game for myself when it releases, but seeing as they were going for the similar release strategy to Wii Sports Club, I don't think it's off to a great start. But yeah, that's the Wii Sports series up until now. I had a lot of fun getting to revisit these older games and remember what initially made them so great. Like I had said multiple times by now, if you have a Wii or Wii U and somehow you haven't played or experienced these games before, I would highly recommend going out and giving at least one of them a try. I mean, it's either that or go outside and play an actual sport, and honestly, I think we all know what the better choice here is. Alright, so I want to talk about Wii Play, because I mean, I've got like, nothing else going on at the moment. So, uh, Wii Play has always been a companion title to Wii Sports, both games being developed alongside each other and showcased to E3 2006 as tech demos before being released as launch titles for the Wii console. Unless you live in North America, in which case you had to wait an extra couple months to get a hold of this game. Although being a companion title to Wii Sports, I feel like it's never been held in the same regard and height as Wii Sports. I always had the impression that Wii Play has been seen as the lesser of the two games, and I'm not entirely sure why. I personally enjoyed Wii Play more as a kid, although now that I'm older, I hold both Wii Sports and Wii Play in the same regard. But enough comparing Wii Play to Wii Sports. So, Wii Play, much like Wii Sports- DANG IT! <sighs> Much like Wii Sports being a tech demo game to show off the Wii's motion control capabilities, Wii Play was released to be a tech demo to show off the Wii's infrared pointer capabilities, which is why these games are perfect companion titles, each getting to show off one of the new core gimmicks of the Wii's primary controller. 
Now, Wii Play ended up selling really good for the console, being the Wii's fifth best-selling game overall. However, the reviews for the game almost contradict that. We Play received ratings around 50-60%, to 60 which begs the question of how did this become the fifth best-selling Wii game? It cheated. Yeah, this game was bundled in with a Wiimote controller for a total of $50 brand new, and at the time a Wiimote controller was costing $40, which basically meant you were getting Wii Play for $10. People didn't really buy Wii Play, they bought a new Wiimote that came with a cheap $10 game. But enough of this beating around the bush, what the heck even is a Wii Play? Well, similar to Wii Sports- Dang it! Not again with the Wii Sports comparisons. <sighs> Wii Play is a minigame compilation at the end of the day, with the main focus being to show off the Wii Mote's pointer controls and capabilities, so you know what that means! I'm gonna get to go through a rundown of every single minigame in this collection and give you my opinions and thoughts on each of them because I have no idea how to structure this Wii Play discussion otherwise. Alright, so first up, a tried and true classic in gaming. Dog Hunt, I mean Shooting Range. Shooting Range is a reimagining of the classic NES game Duck Hunt, just with noticeably less Nintendo Zapper action. There are a total of five different levels in this minigame, each with a different feel from the last. The first level is shooting balloons that will float up from the bottom of the level. The second level is a bunch of targets that will randomly pop up for you to shoot, some being worth more points that are golden and some being worth negative points with your Mii's face on them. Level 3 is some clay pigeons that fly away to you, similar to how skeet shooting works in real life. Level 4 is probably the most interesting, being cans that fly onto the screen and you have to shoot them to keep them in the air longer and rack up a higher score. And finally, level 5 has a bunch of your Mii's running around, trying not to get abducted by UFOs while you are fighting off the aliens. A real 180 from the shooting cans in the previous level. And all the while, there are occasional ducks that fly across the screen that resemble the ducks from Duck Hunt. Overall, this is a simple minigame that perfectly shows off the Wii's pointer feature on the Wiimote. However, most people criticize this game for being too short, I personally think the length of the game is good, especially for a high score based minigame, but it would be nice if there was some more side modes, like an endurance one that you would try and keep the can in the air as much as possible, or even a full blown duck hunt mode that was just the ducks flying across the screen. But once again, this is just one minigame in a collection that really only cost $10, so I feel like it's fair to say what we got here wasn't that bad, but it did have more potential for the idea. Moving on though, the second game in the lineup is Find Me. This is a Where's Waldo inspired minigame with the goal to find the given Mii's in the environment. You'll be assigned a task somewhere along the line of find blank and you need to find the Mii's matching that description. Usually you'll have to find two of the same Mii's or a Mii doing a particular task. There's really not much to it, just point and click. The levels start out embarrassingly easy but slowly ramp up in difficulty as you progress. If anything, this minigame reminds me a lot of Wanted in Super Mario 64 DS and New Super Mario Bros. DS, except that Wanted is a much better take on this style of minigame in my opinion. My biggest complaint with Find Me is just how brain dead the game can start to feel. Every environment feels very similar in one way or another and there's not much variation between each stage or task. Overall, I won't say the game is forgettable, but it's not stealing the show, that's for sure, at least for me. Next is Table Tennis, and to reluctantly bring up Wii Sports again, thankfully Table Tennis plays differently from regular tennis in that game, or even in Wii Sports Resort's Table Tennis mode. Instead of using motion controls, you point your controller at the screen to where your paddle wants to be. It's really fun, and the speed of the game gradually gets faster and faster the higher your rally gets. Your goal is to end up with a rally of 100 where the game will stop you, but this will unlock the quote unquote endless mode of the game with the rally count stopping at 999 and a special message congratulating anyone bored enough to waste their time doing that. It is really satisfying to hold the high rally count and see how long you can go and rack up a high score. I used to despise this game as a kid because of how terrible I was at it, but it's not all that difficult to play once you kind of get a feel for how the game works, getting used to the point of controls over motion controls. This is a very fun high score based game that is sadly also very forgettable in the end with just how little the game has to offer. Something the next game cannot say for itself, Pose Me. And I don't mean in the French girl kind of way. Pose Me is probably one of the more remembered mini games from Wii Play for many different reasons. This game perfectly shows off everything about the Wii controller. Pointer controls, basic motion controls, and the unique button layout of the controller. Nearly everything in one simple and easy to understand fun minigame. The objective is to orientate your Mii in a way that it will fit into shapes that show up on bubbles that pop onto the screen. You can point to move your Mii, twist the controller to, well, twist and rotate your Mii, and press the buttons to change between poses. 
It is fast-paced, frantic, and straight-up fun. Once again, this game starts out slow, but it begins to ramp up in speed and difficulty the further you get. The thing that stands out the most about this game is the bizarre pictures that show up as backgrounds for the stages. Mostly it's just different pictures of flowers, but then there would be full-blown, real pictures of birds and ducks. It is truly amazing. You can easily get sucked into trying to get high scores because every time you fail, it's kind of that feeling of, if only I'd moved a bit quicker, if only my reflexes were a little bit better, or I could definitely do better next time. It's a really addictive game and one of the better ones that we play has to offer overall. Unfortunately, however, following up Pose Me is easily the worst game in the collection, at least in my opinion, Laser Hockey. This is the Wii's remake of an absolute classic, Pong except they ruined everything there is about air hockey. Instead of describing the game, since we all know how air hockey works, I'm just going to complain about it instead. The game controls terribly. Half of the points the opponent scores are just because I accidentally knocked the puck into my own goal. There feels like there is no force behind every hit you try to hit off. You kind of just try and push the puck around instead of trying to actually hit it. And the environment just feels really empty and bland with just a single theme. Also, yeah, I'm just uh, bad at this game, so I'm going to deflect that and blame it on the game being bad instead. Okay, next. Billards is exactly what it says and nothing more. It is a simple 9-ball game of pool that you play using the Wii controller's pointer and motion capabilities. There really isn't much to say about this. I enjoy it and it's pretty fun and handles well, but with no opponents to play against unless you're playing in multiplayer, there's really no reason to keep coming back to this game. Although your Mii's face is on the cue ball, so that's kind of funny to just get to smack that around, but besides that, yeah, it's just basic pool game. Okay, can I make a confession to you that's probably unpopular? I absolutely love fishing in Wii Play. I have absolutely no idea why this is, but it has always been my go-to favorite minigame in Wii Play. It's not even that mechanically complicated, the game is basically just trying to catch as many fish as you can with the time limit, and trying to catch the fish that are the most high scoring. Every so often there'll be a fish that you can catch that will deduct points, but those are kind of easy to avoid as long as you're being careful. It is as basic as it gets when it comes to arcade fishing games, but something has always really resonated with me with this game. The art style is cute and unique, and the gameplay is fast paced enough that it doesn't really drag on, and the high score nature of the game is addicting. Yeah, I swear, my serotonin levels skyrocket any time the special fish spawns in, and I have the high I feel when I catch it. Oh, just wow. Amazing gameplay. My final review being a 7.8. Too much water. The next game is a bit of a strange one to say the least. Not only does it not showcase any pointer feature controls at all, but just overall the game is extremely weird. Of course, I am talking about Charge. You know Charge, right? The game where you ride a cow through an arts and craft field mowing down as many scarecrows as possible before reaching the goal. Of course you do. Who doesn't know Charge? Seriously though, I want to know what that board meeting was like for this game. The fact that it doesn't use any pointer controls is strange enough as to why it's in We Play in the first place, let alone all the creative decisions made along the way. It is in no way a bad mini game though, it's actually quite fun to be honest. It does get pretty old pretty quick, especially trying to go for high scores since it can be really annoying if you miss a scarecrow. But I remember as a kid playing this with my brother just dying in laughter at the sheer absurdity of this game and how funny it was. I also like to think this is where the true origin for the arts and crafts inspiration of the art style for future games like Kirby's Epic Yarn and Yoshi's Warly World is. But of course, you simply cannot discuss We Play without mentioning the absolute classic minigame, Tanks. Easily the most beloved and remembered part of the We Play package, and why most people even bother returning to this game after all these years, this has a minigame that you could easily have made into its own fleshed out release with just a little bit more effort put into it. So let me come out and just say that I don't really like this game. Wait, 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 before you come after me. Let me just say it's entirely because I am bad at this game. I definitely can say that this game is objectively the best game in the package, so there's no doubt about that. I just don't think I'm patient enough to really put up with the arcadey aspects of the game. With very minimal lives and no continue option, I struggle to make it to some of the farther levels. But that is all a problem on my side of the gaming experience and not a fault of the game on its own. Overall though, Tanks has an initial 20 stages and if you are able to beat those you can return to the game and play through a total of 100 stages with stages past 20 beginning to randomize the arenas and which tanks will spawn. I won't get too much into it but there are plenty of different enemy tanks with different abilities all laid out in this toy box aesthetic arena for you to fight through. 
This is also the only game in the weak play package to require to use the nunchuck attachment for the Wiimote. Overall, I say that Wii Tanks is still a lot of fun regardless of how I personally feel about the game. And I know it has its hardcore fan base out there too that will defend this game to the ends of the earth, and I can't blame them, it is a solid game overall. And that is Wii Play, all 9 of the original minigames. For the value of the game being around $10 at the time of release, I can't say that this was a horrible deal at all. Each minigame can be replayed over and over to try and go for better high scores, and each minigame also offers a chance to test your skills for medals, either bronze, silver, gold, or platinum, with a platinum medal showcasing the highest skill level you can achieve in a minigame. There is also a lot of charm to this game. The Miis have a lot of their own character, and the overall game is a very warm feeling that is reminiscent of early Wii games. Perhaps that's just simply nostalgia. But the story of Wii Play does not end here. Much like Wii Sports, the success of Wii Play would eventually spawn a sequel. A sequel that would go on to become a very bane of my existence. A plague on my gaming library. The sequel that I am talking about is, of course, Wii Play Motion. I hate this game. Genuinely. I don't know why, but when this game was announced and it was released, I was so excited and asked for it for Christmas the year it came out, and boy let me tell you the sheer disappointment I had with this game. It was nothing like the original Wii Play. I know that game was mediocre, but come on, We Play Motion was outsold by a knockoff game, Game Party. For a little bit more backstory on this, We Play Motion was really similar to how Wii Sports Resort was. There was a new iteration of the Wii Mote with new motion sensing capabilities, so we needed a new tech game to show this off. Except that's all that was added, so having two tech demo games to show off the new motion control capabilities means one of them was going to be redundant, and guess which one was? Overall, from the very beginning, Wii Play Motion had no purpose or direction. And to make matters worse, there was as many developers on this game as there was many games in the original Wii Play. Did it really take 8 other developers to make the game because Nintendo was too busy perfecting teeter targets? Alright, so this time we've got 12 mini games to go through, but before that, what is this? Why'd you get rid of the me in the middle of the screen? You have the same game menu layout. Heck, you even have the same menu music, but you don't have the me standing in the middle and instead it's the game preview? The original game had a preview pop up when you would hover over the icon. It just made so much more sense! This is just taking away the charm of the game. <sighs> okay, but anyways. While we are off to an already bad start, let's hop into Cone Zone. This is a simple game of keeping the tower balanced for as long as you can as more and more scoops of ice cream are added. It's not a bad game necessarily, but I did also just sum it up with one sentence and there's, there's really not much else to say about the game besides that. It can be fun to play with friends and see who can get the highest score, but the replay value is really low on this one. There is a second game mode with the soft serve ice cream where you have to swirl it into a cone, and I personally think that is much more enjoyable to play. Next up is Veggie Garden, but not garden as in garden, it's garden as in guarding, cause you're guarding a garden. It's a pun. This is the game that completely ruined Wii Play Motion for me when I was a kid. Remember that Wii Play Motion was to show off the motion controls and not pointer controls, which for this minigame pointer controls would make much more sense. But when you have to move the hammer around on the screen, it's not by pointing, so it feels really bad. Now I'm a lot better at this game and even went so far as to beat it my first time ever, but that doesn't make me like it anymore. It is a whack-a-mole game, but the gameplay boils down to just spamming the hammer around on every hole the second you see something move. But here's the real problem. There are tons of opportunities to lose points in this if you hit the wrong thing. And the points you lose from hitting a bad target are way more than the points you would gain from hitting a good one, even with a bonus. It is insanely punishing. My biggest complaint about the game is basically the controls, and just how unfair and punishing it can be. Also, the game just drags out, it is really boring and repetitive to play. I beat it that once and I have no inclination to ever go back to it again. Skip Skinner is the game I will never learn how to properly control. Like, I can sometimes get it, but it's never reliable. Although I do not blame the game for this one because I know some people can get really insane skips with high points. Basically, pick your rock and throw it and bounce it as much as possible across the water. It is simple and fun when you get a good throw. The real noteworthy part of this minigame, however, is the score mode where you're giving perfectly shaped rocks to throw down a course with point rings and a goal to land on. Next up after Skip Skinner is Pose Me Plus. And if it's all the same with you, I would rather not speak of Pose Me Plus and it is inferiority to the original, so moving on. Trigger Twist is the sequel to Shooting Range, and I'd rather not speak of this minigame either, but I will suffer through this one. 
Trigger Twist on paper is much better than Shooting Range, but in execution, it is not nearly as good. Motion controls for something that you used pointer controls in the 1980s. This is not how you play a shooting game. You would never play Call of Duty on an Xbox Kinect, would you now? I give props for having the varied and expanded stages to get to play through, but the controls absolutely ruin any fun that can even be conjured up from this mini game. It's just completely undone and brought down by motion controls. Horrible design choice, and they honestly should have stuck with pointer controls even though it wouldn't match the motion theme of We Play Motion. Next up we have Jump Park, and I really don't know what to say about Jump Park. Out of all the We Play and We Play Motion games, this is the one that I was most bored playing. I was hardly thinking and just going through the motions. Every level I played felt the same with very minor, if even noticeable, differences. I can't say the minigame was bad, but it is. This is the most mediocre game in the entire series, just from how safe and basic it is. However, following that up is the legendary, Nintendo-developed minigame, Teeter Targets. This is the tanks of We Play Motion, and not just because it has a toy box aesthetic. There are 30 total stages in challenge mode, but you can also play a few different variations of endless mode. You use the Wiimote to control the paddles and try and flick the ball into goals on each stage. It's simple and it's fun. And it's really satisfying to perfectly flick a ball at the exactly how you wanted it to reach the goal. I have no complaints about this game and I would say it's probably the best that this package has to offer. It's fun and enjoyable to play. I ended up getting sucked in and trying to beat as many stages as I could. I didn't really go for platinum, but I did get pretty far in before I decided to quit. But I may have gotten a little too far ahead of myself when I said Teeter Target is the best we play motion has to offer because now we have Spooky Search, which is really fun and a unique way to show off the Wemo as a controller. In this game, you play as a Ghostbuster who just absolutely refuses under any circumstances to turn around. So now you have to wave the controller around your head and try and find where the ghosts are at. When you find a ghost, you have to grab it and bring it around in front of you and suck it into the ghost chamber. I don't know what else to call this thing. If you were playing with a friend, it is much better and way more fun, but even by yourself, this game is really fun to play. There are different stages with different difficulties to play through, but just when you thought things were starting to look up for Wii Play Motion, it's only downhill from here with the rest of the minigames. Windrunner has you holding an umbrella and wearing roller skates to use the wind to propel you down a course. Sounds crazy, sounds fun, it's neither of those. For me at least personally, the game controls poorly and the physics never feel quite right. There's a few different modes to play through, but everything kind of just feels the same with little to no variation at all. I think that the wiki page sums it up best by saying, quote unquote, Windrunner is one of the mini games available on Wii Play Motion on the Wii. I kid you not, that is all it says. After Windrunner, we have Treasure Twirl, and I pray to god I never have to say those two titles next to each other again. I don't really know how I feel about this game. On one hand, the concept is really fun and enjoyable to play, but on the other hand, it is really annoying and unsatisfying to play. Maybe I'm just missing something with this game, but it really just boils down to doing the same thing every round, and there's really nothing that makes this game special after the first time you play it. Very forgettable and sadly underwhelming, because the concept is amazing here. So next up we have something very special, something that extremely few video games are capable of achieving, but Flutterfly has done it. This minigame has successfully replicated what being water tortured must feel like. I swear, the controls for this are so wonky and terrible, and on top of that I think I have carpal tunnel from playing this minigame. I also have acquired a newfound fear of crows chasing me with no end to throw them off my trail. It's a bad minigame, hands down, there's no redeeming qualities about this one. I mean, I guess like the art style, but it's also very extremely generic. It's like you took those bubble segments from Super Mario Galaxy where you use the pointer as a fan, but replace the pointer, which works great, with poorly implemented motion controls, and thus you have Flutterfly. And finally, the last minigame in We Play Motion, Star Shuttle. This minigame is actually pretty good, and I think it is one of the best that this package has to show off for motion controls. It can just be really frustrating and annoying to play. You have to orientate the Wiimote in such a way that it matches up with the docking position on the large spaceship, while trying at the same time to manage the speed of how fast you are docking the part. It's stressful in a very manageable way, and it's very satisfying to see the main space station build up over time as you complete level after level. The problem with the minigame is just with how jank it can be sometimes, and with just how boring it can also be. 
It is a really good concept and pretty well execution. I just think with a few changes with pace and gameplay that it could be much, much better. And that's all 12 minigames in Wii Play Motion. Like in the previous game, you can earn medals of bronze, silver, gold, and platinum in each minigame. And unlocking all gold and then all of platinum in minigames will unlock a couple of title screen minigames you can play as well. I had no clue that was a thing until looking at the wiki page for this, but hey, the more you know, am I right? We Play Motion was bundled with the Wiimote, with the Wiimote Plus similar to how We Play was bundled. Meaning that, once again, this was a Wiimote bundled with a cheap game, so I guess although I hate this game, I can't complain that much about it in the end. Except as a kid, I didn't want the Wiimote, I wanted the sequel to We Play. This game disappointed and still continues to disappoint me as a low part in not only the We Play series, but as an overall Wii collection of games. I had high hopes for this game, but the lack of direction and splitting up the minigames to different developers hurt the game in the end. I think that after Wii Play Motion, it is obvious why Nintendo has left behind the Wii Play games in favor of Wii Sports. However, I feel that Wii Play lives on in certain ways, with Nintendo Land on the Wii U and even more recently with Clubhouse Games on the Switch. I doubt that we will ever see a return of the Wii Play series like we have with Wii Sports, but that is okay. While not the best games that the Wii ever had to offer, they served the exact purpose they needed to, being a tech demo to showcase the Wiimote. While I think that the original did this better than Wii Play Motion, it's important to remember these games for what they were and not expect too much from them at the end of the day. But that does not excuse Pose Me Plus for being such a sorry excuse for a sequel to the original minigame. <sighs> Alright, so I want to talk about, reluctantly that is, Wii Music. So, Wii Music is a much different game from the rest of the games under the Wii moniker, and by that, I mean it's not good. Say what you will about the other games in the Wii series, whether that be Wii Play or Wii Fit or whatever, Wii Music is objectively the worst one in terms of being a video game. It's boring, it's repetitive, and I don't exactly know how to play, and I keep losing. Oh wait, I've just been playing Minesweeper this whole time. Alright, so jokes aside, Wii Music is typically seen as being the worst in the Wii series of video games, and even Nintendo knows this with Wii Music being the only game out of the North American Wii series of games to not receive a direct follow-up game. If you ask me, Wii Music was doomed to fail from the very beginning. You see, Wii Music was supposedly inspired by a bell ringing minigame that was originally planned to be a part of Wii Play, but hey, instead of beefing up that game and even more, why not take a minigame idea, flesh it out into its own full-fledged release? It's not like there was any other minigame in Wii Play that would have been better off as a full-blown idea, right? Right? Right, guys? Guys? So, while Wii Music released fully in 2008, there's been some form of the game floating around there all the way back since 2005. Heck, this game was even showed off alongside the Wii Remote. So one might ask, what did they do during those three years from initial reveal to final release? Good question! Wii Music released to horrible critic and user scores, usually around anywhere from 50 to 60 out of 100, with many critics saying that it is a standout from the rest of the Wii series of games. I think it's safe to say that this game underperformed for what Nintendo was expecting, only selling around 2.5 to 3 million copies. Which isn't bad for a Wii game, but considering Wii Fit Plus of all games sold 21 million copies, I didn't even know that game existed for the longest time. But you know what? I was one of those almost 3 million people who did get a copy of this game upon release. It's not necessarily something I'm lucky to say, but it is true. I honestly don't remember how or when I even got this game. It could have been a gift, or I got the game and picked it out while I was at Walmart or something, but truthfully, I'm just convinced it spawned there one day, like my copy of Wii Music just showed up out of nowhere. But that didn't stop me from playing this game. So spoiling what I'm going to say in a bit, but this game is boring to play. But as a kid, man I loved this game for some reason. Now that doesn't mean I sat around and played it a bunch, but when I did play Wii Music, I actually enjoyed myself. I have no bad memories with Wii Music, however I almost never returned to this game after that first little bit of getting it. And now that I have, I haven't been the same. Alright, so upon booting up the game, we are greeted by the ugliest Muppet looking thing I have seen, a short joke, and being tired of how repetitive this game is already. I'm not even past the tutorial, and I'm already bored out of my mind. Upon suffering past the unskippable intro, 
we are met with four options to choose from, which is more like three because one of them is just a few existing songs you've already made in the past. Yeah, actually, it's more like two because one of the options is just music lessons, which are exactly what you could do in free play, except you have to unlock them by playing free play mode, which defeats the whole point of even having this. Really, thinking about it, there's just kind of one mode because free play has absolutely no objectives at all. Alright, so upon booting up the video game, you have access to only one option, mini games. Only three mini games to be precise, but there are mini games. So I'm going to start out with the mini games because it's the best and arguably only good part of Wii Music, at least in terms of gameplay. Starting off, we've got Me Maestro. This is the most basic mini game out of the bunch. You just move your Wii mode around like you were directing an orchestra. This just means that depending on how fast or slow you are swinging your arm is how fast or slow the music will play. There is a scoring system, but it honestly makes no sense to how it works. This is a very bland and boring mini game, but it can be funny at times, just to butcher the song by changing the speed randomly or even just stopping it at times entirely. If you fully stop the song, all the memes will break the fourth wall and just stare directly into the camera waiting for you, and that's kind of funny and charming. The next mini game is Handbell Harmony, an actual music rhythm game. This is easily the best part of Wii Music, in my opinion. You'll be given two handbells to hold, and depending on what color set you have, dictates what notes you'll swing at. Think of Guitar Hero, but with two handbells and the occasional double input because it's a 2008 Wii game with motion controls. Sounds fun, right? Surprisingly, this minigame is actually pretty fun. The biggest disappointment is that Handbell Harmony, and even Me Maestro for that matter, only have five songs each, with Handbell Harmony only having one of those songs with a hard difficulty. I guess to Handbell Harmony's credit, you can change which bells you hold during each song, so there is technically 20 different tracks to play with different notes that you have to hit, but that doesn't change the fact that there's still only 5 songs total. The last minigame is Pitch Perfect. This is essentially Find Me from Wii Play, but with music, if that makes sense. You will be tasked with finding the me playing the highest pitch note, or find two me's playing the same note for example. It's a lot of fun and there is some variation, but after a while with how many levels there are and not too much different from the last, it does get pretty repetitive pretty quickly. But those are the mini games, not really too much to them, although I will admit there is some fun to be had here, even if it's just for a little while. And while I did joke about it, there is more to Wii Music than just the mini games, like taking lessons from that ugly thing at the beginning of the game. They are extremely boring and thank goodness I have heard from others that they are repetitive and only use Twinkle Twinkle Little Star as the practicing song, so I did not have to personally play through the lessons myself. So besides the mini games, the main other game mode is Jam Sessions. These are the free play portion of the game where you just pick a song and which instrument and you go hog wild with that song. The game does encourage you to do whatever you want, so there really is no incentive behind this. Regardless, this is what most people know and remember, and honestly even play Wii Music for. There is a couple of different ways that you can go about doing a jam session. You can do a quick jam which just throws you into a random song with a random assortment of backup instruments and you just kinda go along with it. Or you can customize the song to what you want and what instrument you want to play, how many backups you have, what instruments they play, etc etc. You can customize just about everything when it comes to a custom jam session. Then just play the song however you want, and at the end of your jam session, customized or not, you have the option to save your song as a video. This lets you rank your song to your own liking, and then you can make an album cover for it. And as much as I have given this game flack, the album art customization is always fun to goof around with. You can make some pretty out there covers, and you can make some pretty legit looking nice ones too. It's all up to you. These songs you save will go to the videos option on the main menu and you can rewatch and visit them again later. It really makes you feel like you've created something and published it out there into the world. Which is honestly pretty cool because actually publishing any form of media or entertainment is something I could never actually see myself doing. Wait, that's the main mode of Wii Music. This is what I remember playing the most as a kid when I first got the game. And I am sure that just like everyone else, my experience with the game ended up always just being me creating the most annoying array of instruments imaginable and just swinging my arms around like a madman trying to hit as much notes as possible. That cat suit and swinging my arms at 100 miles per hour is the cause of many laughs as a kid. 
and to completely date my childhood as being from the 2000s, I would go and get my eye dog out and set it next to the TV while doing jam sessions and watch it dance and sing along to the worst music to ever pass through a human's ear. Times were simpler back then. There's also a part where you can try out and see all the different types of instruments you've unlocked, and that's honestly one of the best parts of Wii Music because you can just quickly and easily check out multiple different instruments and see what they do. But that's pretty much the bulk of Wii Music as a whole. There really isn't much to it, and in my opinion it almost becomes hard to even call this a video game at times. It feels more like Wii's alternative to a really cut down version of GarageBand or any other music creation tool. Which honestly is okay considering that's kinda what Nintendo was going for when making Wii Music. They wanted to make a music creation tool that anyone could easily access and understand, and to Nintendo's credit there are accounts of people crediting Wii Music as what inspired them to get into music production, which I think is pretty cool. Meanwhile I have absolutely zero musical talents whatsoever so I'm guessing this game didn't quite inspire me the same way it did others. But that's okay, me and my eye dogs still had fun. An interesting thing about this game is that the director is Kazumi Tutaka, who is a composer and who is responsible for a lot of the music in the Animal Crossing, Pikmin, Yoshi, and multiple other Nintendo games. This was his first and only directorial role in a video game, and I couldn't think of a better game for him to head that role than a Nintendo music game. But with all that said, I hate to say that the music selection in this game is horrible and one of people's most frequent complaints about the Wii music. You see, there's about 50 or so tracks in Wii Music, but most of them are taken from the public domain. This means we get stuck with a bunch of really old generic songs, some as old as from the early 1700s, and most of them being from the 1800s. There are a few recent songs here and there if you consider the 1980s recent, but besides that the most recent and up-to-date songs in Wii Music are Nintendo songs. And even those are basically just main title themes for a few franchises like Mario, Zelda, F-Zero, etc. I mean, I don't exactly know what kind of music would have been better to include without completely dating the game to the late 2000s, but the selection was far from perfect. But to give the game one last compliment, because I feel like I've trashed on it a bit recently, the box art for this game is actually pretty good. At least here in North America, the box art has a bunch of instruments and music notes exploding out from the band at the bottom of the case, and this is all done in a holographic foil, and it looks pretty nice. I always appreciate when a game's box art adds just that little bit extra to make it that much nicer. And hey, it may not be the best design in terms of box art, but compared to what the manual cover is, we could have done a lot worse. There was talks and hopes for a sequel and a follow-up to Wii Music at some time, but something tells me the world wasn't really asking for a Wii Music Plus or a Wii Music U. Now, I think for what it's worth, Wii Music was a fine enough video game. It is far, far from perfect and could have been a lot more fun if Nintendo had focused its attention more on the minigames and actual video game side of Wii Music instead of the music creation side. Imagine if Wii Music had a more fleshed out minigames like Wii Fit does. That game accomplishes to be a video game and a workout routine. It's hard not to think there's a world out there where Wii Music accomplishes the same thing but with music creation. I don't know, I want to wish that this game was better but at the same time, I can't possibly imagine much better gameplay than this. <laughs> Alright, so I want to talk about Wii Party, and let me tell you, I'm a big Wii Party fan. Is it because I have no actual friends to party with? No. Okay, maybe, but it's also just a really solid minigame collection, okay? So, Wii Party has a lot going on with it, at least compared to the other games in the Wii series, that is. Instead of being a tech demo or gimmicky, Wii Party is a lot more like a Mario Party substitute, and I don't really mean that in a negative way. Obviously, it's not going to be as good as the Mario Party because that came out before it, but it sure is a whole lot better than what followed. Wii Party was developed by Indie Cube, who had done some work for Nintendo in the early 2000s, most notably with an F-Zero game. Wii Party was their first big game for Nintendo, and what would get them through the door to work on many more projects for Nintendo going forward. Honestly, I think Indie Cube did a really good job with Wii Party, and we'll get into that eventually, but it is obvious why Nintendo started to trust them with more future projects. After the release of Wii Party, the main developer of the Mario Party games switched from Hudson Soft to Indie Cube, which given their experience and, dare I say, success with Wii Party, that wasn't the worst move by Nintendo. But if you know anything about Mario Party going forward from 8, it was all downhill after that change. 
Thankfully, with the newer games, they were turning things around, but Mario Party is still far from its golden days. And to give you the full extent of what Indie Cube has done with Nintendo, they are responsible for Animal Crossing Amiibo Fest. So I'll just leave that one there. But this is a discussion about Wii Party, not Mario Party or Indie Cube. I just wanted to say all that to say that Indie Cube's first real jab at anything with Nintendo was actually pretty good. So with the groundwork laid, what is a Wii Party? Well, to put it simply, it's basically a Mario Party game with a Wii series coat of paint. Once again, not a bad thing to say. Wii Party does not try to be anything besides what it is. It knows exactly what it set out to do and does just that, which I think is respectable. There are a few creative ideas here and there, and I think that the mini games are really good for a Mario Party clone. Overall, it stands out just enough to not get thrown in with the forgotten pile of abandoned Mario Party clones, at least in my opinion. But enough of me trying to articulate my thoughts, let's get into the game itself. Upon starting up the game, we are greeted by the one, the only, Party Phil. If you know that disgusting creature from Wii Music known as Sebastian 2, it's essentially him, but much better. I don't know how, since they basically act the same for both games, but anyone I know who knows both will agree that Party Phil is 10 times better. But aside from that short introduction, you pretty much hop straight into everything. There's no long-winded tutorial, no being forced to unlock all the other game modes or mini-games. You pretty much have everything in this game to offer available to you right from the beginning, which I think is great for a party game. It makes it really easy to pop the game in and start it up playing really quick when you have friends or just trying to play the game. I know that there are some people who really enjoy unlockables and party games, and I totally understand that. But with how casual and simple this game is, it's really nice to have everything available to you from the beginning. Heck, the only unlockable in the game is a minigame mode that only requires you to play every 4 player minigame at least once, and that's not hard to do at all. The main game mode in Wii Party is Board Game Island, at least in my opinion. This is a part of the party games category and is the closest thing to a standard Mario Party experience. But Wii Party does a few creative changes to make this different enough. For starters, the board is linear, and the goal is to reach the end instead of gathering a token collectible throughout the map. Which, I know a lot of people complain about linear boards in games like these, but I think that Board Game Island manages to be linear and still be a really good board at the same time. There are tons of spaces that can just send you forward, backward, swap you with another player, send you into a volcano, which me and my brother would call hell when we were kids. There is so much that can go on. I've played games where I will be far into the lead, and within a few turns, I'm almost back to the beginning. You really have to just sit down and play this board to truly understand the chaos that ensues. Something this board does to somewhat level the playing field and keep one player from getting too far ahead is have what I call roadblocks or checkpoints. Every so often on the board, you will run into an obstacle that will require a certain dice roll to get past. Even the condition to win the game is blocked behind one of these obstacles, where you have to roll a 6 or higher. It's really funny because you can get really early head start with high rolls and then get stuck behind one of these obstacles and everyone will just catch up to you. So if you ever get behind, there is a very realistic hope of catching up. Another interesting thing this game mode does, and a lot of Wii Party does, is instead of rolling a dice at the beginning of the game to determine player order, you do what Wii Party calls play for position. Before each round, everyone plays a 4 player minigame, and depending on the outcome of the minigame depends on which order you play in. So, first place goes first, second place second, and so on. There is much more incentive to winning the minigame other than just play order though. First, second, and third place all get bonus dice to use. With the higher you place, the better your dice is. So, if you dominate minigames each round, you will be so far ahead because you are rolling with two six-sided dice each turn. Honestly, the utter chaos and luck that is cluttered into this map, the game mode is so fun to play. I highly recommend trying Board Game Island out if you have not, and you ever get the chance. Easily my favorite part of Wii Party. The next game mode that is a part of the same category as Board Game Island is Globetrot. This is another unique game mode that has a bunch of creative ideas. I just think that a lot ends up landing flat compared to Board Game Island. At least for me, that is. The idea is that the board is a scaled down version of the earth and there is landmark spaces in different countries that you want to try and land on to earn souvenir pictures. These pictures act as the stars from Mario Party to give them a comparison. I think what sets this game mode apart the most is that you use numbered cards to move instead of a dice. I'm not the biggest fan of this concept, but I guess it's whatever. Overall, the game mode is one of my least favorite from just how boring it can be to play. I would definitely rather play Board Game Island with all its randomness. I do want to say though, I can see Globetrot being a lot more fun with friends, but sitting down and only playing with computer players is not the greatest of times. 
And yes, I did just once again admit to having no friends. The last three game modes in the Party Games tab are essentially ways to play the mini-games without directly playing the mini-games. There's typically a short activity that goes on and then you're into a mini-game. And this will go on for about 10 rounds or so. Really, the only reason you would pick these game modes over just playing the minigames directly is there is an encouragement for you to do best in the minigames because there will typically be a reward associated with winning. And at the end of the 10 rounds, there is an overall winner for the game mode. Maybe it's a little difficult to explain, but take Swap Meet, for example. If you win the minigame, you get to pick which meat you want first, meaning that you get a better chance at getting the meat you need. The overall objective of Swap Meet is to get a row of matching Mii's, so you can see where getting to pick first will have its benefit to winning the minigames. And it's the same thing with Bingo. If a minigame ball is rolled out, you obviously play a minigame, and the winner gets to pick which me on their board they want to mark off. And this could literally mean you winning the game if you only needed one space left. My favorite out of this category of games is Spin-Off, because it really does make you feel like you're a part of a game show with a big wheel and absurd point system. It's goofy and has a bit of randomness, but this was a game that I just dominated from the beginning, so of course I was going to have fun with it. The highlight for me was when the bank got so large and someone spun a minigame spot and I won that minigame, netting me like 20,000 points. So that was fun. But yeah, that's the party games category and the main bulk of Wii Party. Admittedly, there isn't too much here, but I think that what is here is good enough and does have some creativity and diversity to it. There is a category of games that you were supposed to play with a close buddy and it's fun from what I remember a long time ago. Those are focused on pair minigames, which you work together instead of against each other. If you can get someone to play these, they're short 10-15 to 15 minute games. I'd totally recommend checking a couple of these out. There is a house party mode, if I am correct. This is just where you use Wii Party as a more traditional board game, and it has you do stuff in the real world like passing a Wii remote around. I could be completely wrong though, it's been forever since I've played this game mode. So that pretty much just leaves us with the mini games themselves. There is a very solid collection of minigames here, and a party game is only as good as its minigames at the end of the day. There are a few really good minigames that I would honestly say are better than most Mario Party minigames. I don't know if that's a controversial thing to say or not, but I'll stand by it. Zombie Tag will forever be my favorite minigame from any party game. This is definitely a biased opinion from my nostalgia of Wii Party playing this minigame laughing at just how goofy it was as a kid, and from nostalgia of playing actual zombie tag with my friends all the way through elementary school into middle school. That was one of the games we'd almost always play no matter what age we were. So yeah, I've got a lot of nostalgia connected to this game, and when I saw that Wii Party had a version of that game as a minigame, I was instantly in love. I'm not going to go into every single minigame in Wii Party, but they range from simple to complex and extremely short to a bit long. It's a very good variety. At the end of the day, your opinion on the minigames is ultimately going to be your own, and if you don't like this set of minigames, I can respect that. Me personally, I think it's a pretty top-notch selection. One last thing that I want to talk about with Wii Party is the one unlockable in the game, that being the game mode Spot the Sneak. This is one of my favorite modes in Wii Party, and I really wish that more games, especially the Mario Party games, would borrow from this game mode. Basically, it's a way to play a bunch of mini games back to back to back, but each round a random player is chosen to be what they call a sneak. Being the sneak gives you an edge at the mini game where you can toggle a cheat or you just have an advantage by default. It's really fun, and you end up having to actually be strategic about it because you get points for winning the mini game and being the sneak lets you win easily, but if you get caught, the players that found you out will get points as well. It's a lot of fun, and like I said, I really wish more games had a mode similar to this. But yeah, that's basically it for Wii Party. It's a lot more in-depth and content-rich compared to the other games in the Wii series, that's for sure. But the party doesn't stop here. Oh no. We've got Wii Party U to look at as well. Honestly, if you forgot about this game, I don't blame you. Firstly, it was on the Wii U, so that alone isn't a great start. And from there, it only sold a little under 2 million copies, making it one of the worst selling games in the Wii series. I ended up getting this game back when Nintendo would offer Club Nintendo members the choice between four games to pick and you would get a free digital copy. The four games being New Super Mario Bros. U, Pikmin 3, Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, and of course, Wii Party U. I already owned New Super Mario Bros. U, and I had no interest in the Pikmin series, so it left me the option between Legend of Zelda Wind Waker or Wii Party U. 
So even at the time when I wasn't super big into gaming, this was still a tough choice for me. But why I ultimately went with Wii Party U over the Wind Waker was because I knew of how much of a good time I had with the first Wii Party game. And I knew that I could play this game with my brother since this was a shared console at the time, and I knew he wouldn't end up playing the Wind Waker. So in a rare turn of events, I was actually a selfless kid in that moment. I did end up buying and playing through the Wind Waker because of a sale the eStore had eventually, so if you were wondering about that, yes, I did get Wind Waker. And if you're wondering about Pikmin 3, it still doesn't interest me. Honestly, looking back, I don't regret picking Wii Party U since looking at the prices for that game now. Yeah. So, Wii Party U is a lot of the same from before. You see, you've got the Wii, you've got the party, and I still have no friends. Yes, I am going to overuse that joke. Okay, but in all seriousness, Wii Party U is literally just Wii Party on the Wii U. Of course, it's not the exact same game, but there really isn't that much here to change things up from the first time around. You have what you would expect. The main category here is TV Party, which is the exact same thing as the Party Games category from the first game. Here is where you can find what I consider to be the highlight game mode of Wii Party U, that being Gamepad Island, because it's not a true Wii U game without a gamepad gimmick thrown in. The biggest problem with this game mode? You need two players to play this. I have played this in the past, and it's a lot like Board Game Island from Wii Party, but it's just not the same in my opinion. You have to do a lot of different things on the gamepad, hence the name, and it's really annoying going back and forth between a Wiimote and the gamepad. It's not terrible, but like, it could be better. But since I can't play Gamepad Island due to the lack of... I'm just going to move to the second main game mode, Highway Rollers. The gimmick of this game is that it's a very long linear board. It's about 300 spaces long from beginning to end. But don't worry if that sounds like it will take forever. Depending on how you place in the mini games, you will get a ton of bonus dice to roll. So you can move pretty far in some rounds. There are even some sections of the board littered with event spaces, but they are never as creative or hectic as we have seen in the first Wii Party game. This game mode is fun, especially with friends, because someone can get really stuck far behind and then catch up in the blink of an eye. But it does get very repetitive since the board has no variation to it throughout the entire thing. The most exciting thing that happened to me when I was playing was at the very end of the game when I happened to land on a help last place space, and I ended up rolling the UFO. Since two people were on the same spot tied for last place, this brought everyone to the same spot on the board pretty much. Then, someone else landed on a help the last place, giving us all move ahead by 20 spaces, which was just enough to put us all at the finish line. Like in Board Game Island, there is an obstacle blocking you from winning, so it was one round where three of us were attempting the obstacle. It was pretty funny how it all ended up playing out, because it was like none of the rest of the game actually mattered up until this point. But that's pretty much Highway Rollers, you play a mini game and roll a bunch of dice. There's really not much to it. The last bulky game mode here is Me Fashion Plaza. This is a very interesting game mode because it's a fairly small board, but the goal isn't to reach the end, but rather collect a certain amount of clothing throughout the way. There really isn't that much to it, but the concept is pretty neat. This is very luck dependent, but that can lead to some pretty funny moments and some frustrating ones too. In terms of what's left, we have a version of that arcade game where you put quarters in the machine and try to dump a lot more out, it's fun and quick, but there's not really that much to it. And then there is unfortunately a version of Swap Meet, but it's even more confusing. There are so many possible combinations that the Wii U gamepad is used to display a rulebook of combos. I do not like this game mode, but I'll be honest and say that it is because I am bad at it. There are a few other categories that return from Wii Party, but almost everything relies on having two or more people to play with which pretty much leaves us with just the minigames left. And I have mixed feelings about the minigames. There are some really good minigames in this collection, but they're missing a lot of the charm and creativity from the first game. There are tons of reused ideas and straight up copies of minigames they've already done in the last game. And some of these games drag on for way too long. And to make it all worse, there is only 4 player and 1v3 player minigames. I guess overall it could be worse selection of games, but with how hit or miss it can be, it's just average overall. So yeah, that's pretty much Wii Party U. 
I feel like I went through that game fairly quickly, but that's because it's a lot of what was the same from Wii Party. Now, would I love to see a sequel to Wii Party on the Nintendo Switch, like how Wii Sports got? Absolutely! I would love to see this game return in some way. Besides Wii Sports, I dare to say that this is the best that the Wii series has to offer, and I almost would go as far as to argue that it's even better than Wii Sports. Indie Cube did develop Clubhouse games for the Switch, and they are still the devs for Mario Party, so maybe there is a chance Wii Party eventually gets a sequel someday. Now, would I be sad if we never got another sequel? No, I wouldn't really be sad, but if there ever is a sequel, you definitely won't hear me complaining. I would say to check either, if not both of these games out if you haven't before, and if you do own either of these games, pop them back in sometime and give them another chance to see how they hold up for you. I mean, there's definitely much worse party games you could play with your time. <coughs> Mario Party 9. <coughs> Alright, so I want to talk about Wii Fit. Nintendo's big push into, I guess, the exercise scene? I don't know. The Wii had a pretty large casual player base, so this isn't like the worst idea Nintendo has had. So Wii Fit is obviously a part of the Wii series of games alongside Wii Party, Wii Music, Wii Sports, and so on. And Wii Fit, critically, was also one of the most successful titles in that series. But I almost consider this game to be its own thing outside of everything else. Wii Fit truly is a different experience all on its own from a standard video game. This will probably sound a little crazy, but I would dare to say that Wii Fit was really the first early successful example of interactive VR gaming. Of course, there isn't a headset or anything, but you do use your body to physically control the game a lot of the time, and I can't really think of any other games or consoles that worked that way before we fit. And definitely none that worked this well. Closest I can think of is the iToy for the PlayStation 2, and that was basically just a web camera for the system. But I'm not really here to talk about how I think we fit as an example of early signs of the evolution of physically interactive VR gaming. I'm here to burn some calories. Wii Fit is in the genre of gaming known as Exer Gaming, or Exercise Gaming, and it's not Nintendo's first foray into this genre. Over a decade before Wii Fit would release in 2007, Nintendo partnered with Life Fitness to produce the Entertainment System. This was essentially a stationary bike that was designed to let people exercise while playing video games. Heck, there was also a whole unit that would connect to the SNES. Talk about a gimmicky video game controller. But yeah, Nintendo has been aware of the demand for exercise video games, and with Wii Fit being one of the best-selling games of all time, and the third best-selling console game to not be a pack-in title, it's safe to say that Nintendo succeeded by tapping into that demand. But besides the Wii Fit trainers being included as fighters in Smash Bros, I feel like nowadays Wii Fit is mostly remembered for body-shaming people at a very young age and calling them obese, setting them up for a lifetime of insecurities. But the Wii Balance Board is also really accurate, so I really don't know what to tell you. Obviously, having played Wii Fit again extensively for the first time in a pretty long time, I remembered what made this such a big hit among everyone in the late 2000s, and I can confidently say that Wii Fit holds up incredibly well still to this day, even for a Wii game. So, Wii Fit is really good about making the experience individual for each and every person who plays. You will get to assign your me, input your height and birthday, and take a body test so that Wii Fit can truly find out who you are. I always loved the body test as a kid because it ended with assigning you in a Wii Fit age based on how you performed. I would always try to get this to be as close to my actual age as I could, and I think only once ever did I actually get my real age as my Wii Fit age. Playing again recently, I was still able to get my Wii Fit age really close to my actual age, but not quite exact. Like I had mentioned earlier, the Wii Balance Board is extremely accurate. I was surprised at just how precisely it was able to measure my weight and BMI to what it actually is. Which I guess is a good transition into talking about the Wii Balance Board. This thing is the backbone of Wii Fit and what makes the entire game even possible. There were a few other games that would use the Wii Balance Board, but Wii Fit pretty much was the main one. The Wii Balance Board is pretty much a sophisticated scale that would measure just how much weight is on each of the four legs. This way it is able to measure your center of balance and know when you are leaning to one side, stuff like that. It's honestly a really cool piece of tech made almost entirely for just a fitness game. Also considering that Wii Fit only costs $90 at release for the balance board and the game itself is a really good deal. I can't state just how popular this game was at release as well. Wii Fit was selling millions in every new region it would release in and messing around with the Wayback Machine to look at old GameStop pages for Wii Fit there were positive reviews for the game before it was even released in North America. 
and even a few years after the game released, the Wii Fit bundle was still on the homepage for the Wii section as a featured best title. People loved Wii Fit! Everyone praised how it could help you get in shape and stay healthy in the comfort and privacy of your own home. But that was all in the late 2000s. How does Wii Fit hold up today, in my opinion and experience? One of the first things you will be tasked with doing is choosing which trainer you want to have during your workouts. It's not a permanent choice and you can change it later on, but I really don't feel like going through the settings later, so I'm just going to make this count. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm going to be spending a lot of time with this trainer and get to see them in a working out environment, so I think I'm going to pick the hot one. And after choosing which trainer you would like to work out with, you are pretty much let loose into what the game has to offer. A lot of the workouts and games are initially locked, but they will slowly unlock over time as you work out more. I think this is actually a really good decision for the game, as an incentive to keep you from returning to the game and thus encouraging consistency with your workout schedule. Even I was tempted to keep returning to this game and I already regularly work out on my own, so I guess that just goes to show how effective that is. Even with most of the game locked away at the first, there is still plenty to do. There are three main categories to pick from, strength workouts, yoga, and balance game. Strength workouts are going to be exactly that, stuff like push-ups, lunges, etc. Yoga is, well obviously yoga poses to help stretch and strengthen certain parts of your body. And lastly, balance games are the mini-game part of Wii Fit, mostly focusing on doing different things with the balance board. As a kid, when I played this game, I never did any of the strength workouts or yoga and instead stuck entirely to the balance games. Now that I'm older, I forced myself to do stuff like strength workouts and yoga, then get stuck entirely doing the balance games. Look, if you disguise anything as a video game, I will do it. I pretty much learned math in elementary school because I found a PC game for it, and I've learned the basics of two different languages because Duolingo's experience and achievement system. I'm an easy guy to motivate. Honestly, there really isn't much to say, at least in my opinion, about the strength and yoga sections in Wii Fit. They are really good and they do work you through each routine very thoroughly as well as give you tips if you are struggling. The trainer is always extremely encouraging and really gives off that feeling of it's okay if you can't fully do this now, but with enough work, you can. Which for being an accessible fitness game, that's an extremely good thing to have. But I'm a gamer. I don't want to exercise. I want to exercise while playing a little mini game. Honestly, Wii Fit has some of the best mini games for a Wii mini game collection. I don't know if this has to do just with the balance board making each of them stand out or just from how quick each one is to play, but I would be lying if I said I didn't have a good time with pretty much every single minigame I played. Now I didn't get around to playing everything in Wii Fit, but what I did play was very good. The hula hooping game is iconic and really goofy and fun to play, the tight roping minigame is as frustrating as I remember it being, and the soccer game is a lot of fun to see how long you can keep the combo going. If I did have to say one minigame is bad, it would be the one with the tilting platforms that you use to get the ball through the goal. The concept is really good, but me personally, I can never really get the feel for this game and struggle a lot with it. But it is fleshed out and has a lot of levels, so I can't even complain about it too much. I'm just not that good at it. But what if I told you, this isn't even all that Wii Fit has to offer. What if I said there was more? Wii Fit Plus released about a year after the original with more content to add to Wii Fit. This was pretty much paid DLC for Wii Fit. It's a whole different game and an entirely different disc, but if you have saved data from Wii Fit on your console, then Wii Fit Plus will connect with that and bring all your data and profile and connect the two games. Wii Fit Plus pretty much comes with everything unlocked, as well as a few new exercises and games. It really is just Wii Fit, but more. I also believe this is the game to introduce the calorie tracker to let you know just about how much calories you were burning with each workout. Not much to say about the strength in yoga, but the new mini games that are added are some of my favorites in the Wii Fit series, with my all time favorite being the obstacle course. I, I love this so much. You have to go through a long obstacle course by running and jumping in place on the balance board, and while that may sound awful, it controls way better than you would ever expect it to. I had so much fun doing this minigame, and if I ever returned to Wii Fit in the future, I would 100% be loading up Obstacle Course as the first thing I would do. Another of the new minigames that was added is the chicken flying game where you have to go from target to target to get different amounts of points. This was a pretty popular minigame, but I just don't see the hype behind it. It's slow and repetitive, and in my opinion, towards the end, I just wanted it to be over. There's also a snowball battling minigame that's pretty fun. I just wanted to throw that out there. 
Overall, Wii Fit Plus is the expansion the original Wii Fit game always needed. So why did it only take me until this year to finally hear about it? I don't know how, but Wii Fit Plus just kind of always evaded me until I saw it at a random game store one day this year and was really confused at what it was. Of course, I grabbed it and I'm happy to finally own Wii Fit Plus, but I just can't believe it took me this long to learn about what it truly is. But if you thought that that's all that Wii Fit had to offer, you'd be wrong because there is one last game in the Wii Fit series, that being Wii Fit U. Because how dare Nintendo try to name this game any more creatively. As you can imagine, this is the Wii Fit game made for the Wii U console, and the biggest thing that's going to be added to this installment is obviously going to be Wii U gamepad support. So with Wii Fit Plus, I pretty much expected it to be a lot more of the same from before, but when it came to Wii Fit U, I was really expecting a bit more of a sequel, but it's a lot more like a Wii Fit Plus 2. Which I guess isn't really a bad thing, just kinda caught me off guard to see my high scores from Wii Fit already on the leaderboards in Wii Fit U. All three of the Wii Fit games communicate and share data with each other, making this a really streamlined experience for tracking all your workout data. Like I said, the biggest addition to Wii Fit U is the gamepad support. This is probably the least gimmicky use for the gamepad in a Wii U game, just from how much more of a quality of life improvement it is rather than building the game around using it. In your workouts, you can see different angles of your trainer to help visualize the movements better, and you can even turn on the camera to see yourself like a mirror to help improve your posture and poses. You can also take a profile picture, and I thought that was neat. There are new tasks to do with your body test that now involve the gamepad and looking around the room, and of course new minigames. I don't think that the gamepad adds too much to the minigames other than the element to make them feel more immersive. Also, besides just new minigames including the gamepad, there are tons of remasters of the original minigames including some of my favorites like Obstacle Course as well as a new version of Obstacle Course where you can move not only just forward but as well as left and right which I think is really cool. It's so much fun and seriously controls way better than you would expect. One of the last major things that this game adds are dances. There are a bunch of different styles of music that you can choose to dance to, and the game has whole routines to go through. One small problem, this requires two controllers with Wii Motion Plus in them, and at the moment I only have one controller and it does not have Motion Plus, so I guess I'll most likely never get to experience the dancing. No joke, I literally have two Wii U's with me in my apartment right now, but only one standard controller. I've clearly got my priorities all mixed up right now. At the end of the day, Wii Fit U is going to be the definitive way to play Wii Fit, with all the old content remastered in HD and all the new content on top of that just makes this the best way to go. But if you are a functioning member of society and don't own a Wii U, but you want to experience Wii Fit, then Wii Fit Plus will do you just fine. Also, all three of the games in the Wii Fit series are very cheap nowadays, so it's really accessible and easy to get your hands upon at least just one of them, so if you are interested, it's not the hardest thing in the world to check out. Overall, I think that Wii Fit definitely deserves the hype and praise that it gets, for not only being an amazing, judgment-free way to get people into fitness, but also just as an incredibly unique gaming experience with all the balance board has to offer. All the different elements work so perfectly together to complement the overall game. And so with that said, I 100% fully understand all the hard work that went into making the Wii Fit game so good just to justify Wii Fit Trainer and Smash.